If your child is born with a crooked foot, what do you do? Take them to a doctor and fix it. If your kid breaks an arm, what do you do? You go to the hospital and fix it. If you live in Africa and your child gets burned, what do you do? You wait. If you live in Southeast Asia and your child is born with a disability, what do you do? You wait and wait and wait. Children all over the world are born with disabilities and don't have access to excellent care. In many cultures, a difference like club foot, bowed legs or cleft lip can be seen as a curse. Kids are stigmatized. Families are shattered. Hope is lost. It's a common story, but God invites us to change it. Cure serves kids with treatable conditions in countries that don't have adequate resources. We have teaching hospitals that give world-class surgery to the poorest of the poor. And when children and their families come to a Cure hospital, not only do they receive excellent treatment, but we also tell them about the real healer. The reason why we treat them. We tell them about Jesus. We tell them that they are not cursed. We tell them that they are loved. They find healing. Hope is restored and their story is changed. You know what we're about to do? We're about to get real. We're about to have conversations that Christians have behind closed doors. The scary ones. The ones that make you feel uncomfortable. That's where we're going. Why? Because we're family. Ustedes son mi familia. So this is the Brian and Janelle podcast. She's Janelle. And I'm Brian. If you don't want to miss anything, all you have to do is hit the subscribe button to get a notification whenever we drop a new episode. This is the Brian and Janelle Podcast. Happy Friday Eve, as Janelle would say. Yeah, woohoo! And right. I am playing along with that silliness because she's That's my friend. That's right. <laughs> it <We're>, is on. <laughs> and today we have a, we're setting aside our regular programming because we want you to get pumped up like we are about Cure International. Cure International is a wonderful organization that has hospitals in areas of the world like Ethiopia, Kenya, Malawi, where they heal children with correctable disabilities and share Jesus with them and their families. We've had already had a whole bunch of Moody Radio family members participate yeah. in this kind of giving where, again, uh, 47 people already have jumped in. Yeah, over $9,000. Mm. That's nine children that can count on their lives being transformed. Nine children and their families that will hear about the love of Jesus. So thankful for that. And it doesn't have to take nine people. You don't have to give $1,000. You can come in with $100, $200, or $50. Together, we can come up with the money necessary to heal the children that God has willed through Cure International. And so stories happen to be one of my favorite ways to tug on your heartstrings because stories are so powerful. So mm-hmm. joining us now from Ethiopia, Joel Whitwer, who is the lead storyteller uh, for Cure International in Africa. Joel, thanks for joining us, brother. Hey, it is my pleasure. All right, man. So I'd love for you to launch into what one of your favorite stories to give a people a picture of what Cure International does. Tell us about one of the children. I mean, one of my... I mean. 
am I allowed to play favorites? Is that a thing we can do? Like, okay, I won't say favorite. One of the kids I really liked. How about that? <laughs> there you go. I like <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was this kid named Hoptimarium, and he uh, he came to our hospital here with a condition called clubfoot, where his feet kind of curve in on each other. He's kind of walking on his ankles, can't walk easily, can't run. Um, and it, it's, it was messing up his life. But one of the ways that it really got to him more than just physically is all the other kids are just kind of mocking him day in and day out. Kids can be rough. They're bullying him. He's kind of ostracized, shoved to the corner. And because of that, he kind of developed this really tough exterior. He loved to fight. He was just a hard kid. And he comes to the hospital, and he was a troublemaker in the ward, um, getting into trouble left and right, like making other kids cry, just disrespecting his mom. And we got him the surgery. He needed to straight his feet. But... The physical transformation is amazing, don't get me wrong, but the really, really cool thing with him is we have spiritual staff in the hospital that are day in and day out loving on these kids. And um, as much as he tried to push them away, they showed up to love him every single day. And over the course of his stay at our hospital, his whole demeanor just changed. They were sitting next to his bed, coloring with him, loving him, telling him stories about Jesus. and. He, be, he, he slowly opened up, his walls came down, and he still has emotional work to do, but he left our hospital on new feet and with a whole new personality, one that could not only receive love, but give love to others. He was completely changed when he left the hospital, and I, was, like, I wasn't sure it was going to be possible, but um, man, God did some work in that kid's life. Beautiful story, and you know, somebody in the U.S. might be hearing that and going, that's great. But I mean, why did they need cure to get this corrected? Why didn't his family correct his club feet before this? So what keeps families from getting the kids' procedures they need for these correctable disabilities? I mean, that's the crazy thing is like, we have these conditions in the U.S. as well. It's that they're identified and they're treated right at birth because we have this this top-tier healthcare system. But in, in countries like uh, Ethiopia and other places, cure works. That's not a possibility. A lot of these um, kids and families will have to walk literal hours or days to get to the nearest health clinic. Um, and I was just looking at some, some statistics. And there are three doctors for every one million people in Ethiopia. Oh, um, wow. The need is far greater than what the, the country can do. So um, we at Cure have these specialists that can treat these conditions and and provide um, this life-changing surgery. Um, take a kid from a, a life where they would be um, disabled and really the only future they have would be begging on the side of the street to help their family to a kid that uh, can walk, can run, can help out on the farm, can go to school, can get a job. Um, and it's not only this kid's life that's being transformed, but the family's life. The families here are much more, you're, you're always part of the family. You're always, even when you are an adult and move out, you're still contributing to the family life. So one kid's disability and one kid's healing um, transforms an entire community. Joel, I, I love hearing about kids whose lives are changed. Would you tell us another story? Wow, you are really needy today. I'm needy oh. every day, bro. <laughs> you don't even know me yet. All the time. You figured out. I got some stories for you, Joel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, another one. I mean, so one of, one of, my, um, one of my friends, his name is Kasib. Uh, he showed up at the hospital with this condition called knock knees. It was from birth. Literally, his legs angled inwards and every time he was walked each knee would hit the other it made balancing really hard it made walking really hard it just it made life painful um and the big thing that uh, was affecting him is he couldn't make the walk to school they were a few miles from the closest school and with his condition he couldn't walk there um and without an education really he had no future in his community generally kids without an education they'll just help on the family farm but even then he couldn't walk and he couldn't help plow the fields or harvest or anything so he really had no options for the future um and then he was just kind of hanging out in his community and one of those three doctors uh, for every million people in ethiopia just happened to be walking through and uh they knew of cure and so they're like hey Kassib, like here's the here's a telephone number call this hospital and we're pretty sure they can uh, they can straighten your legs out so he did he showed over the hospital and when he showed up, he had this big walking stick that he needed to stand up. He needed to walk. Um, and it was essentially a third leg for him. He couldn't function without it. Um, he had a few surgeries. It took a while, but we got his leg straightened out. And uh, his last week with us, he, we, he was just kind of walking around and not using his stick to walk, but just kind of walk around and like tap people with it and show like, hey, I don't need my stick anymore. How cool is this? Um, and then he, 
literally walking on his own two feet, his head held high, um, and walking to a brand new future. He was uh, he plans to go to school, plans to get involved in his community, and then and carve out a future for himself. So that that's kind of stuff I love hearing is just these futures transform. Joel, that's that's fantastic. Uh, you you clearly have have a heart for him, and you have a a way to see into people's souls, like how needy I am. Yeah, <laughs> which right. I think is just Amazing. a gift that I'm glad you're on site in Ethiopia. <laughs> To help people. I mean, I, I love the chance that I get to, to spend time with these kids and, and see the stories that Kira is doing firsthand. Like, yeah. I think this is a, a physical manifestation of the gospel. Like, Amen. when Jesus came to earth, he didn't just go to a leper and be like, hey, it's kind of a bummer you have leprosy, but let me tell you about myself. No, he met the leper, <laughs> he healed the leprosy, and uh, he, he kind of changed their life. So, at Kira, we believe that if you really care about people, you have to care about the physical um, challenges they have, That's right. but then we also as Christians that our life extends past this physical world. So we need to yes treat the physical challenges people have, but then also we need to talk about what comes next and minister to the people's souls. Um, I think yeah, it's the gospel. You can't do one without the other. Um, care for people where they are and care for what the future holds for all of our souls. Again, Joel Whitwer is lead storyteller in Africa for Cure International, calling us from Ethiopia with beautiful stories of how Cure International literally gives the gospel and shows kids the gospel by bringing them healing for correctable disabilities. Your gift right now will help cover that. It's $1,000 to cover the cost of a surgery. So if you can come in at $100, you know that you've got part in the procedure of the healing of a small child. So would you put, consider it? Again, the number to get in, 833-246-HERO, 833-246-4376, or go to moodyradio.org slash Cleveland to transform a life of a child like he described, 833-246-HERO. Hi, Joe Stoll here, and as you may remember, I served previously as the president of Moody Bible Institute. But I want to tell you about another role I get to serve in now. I have the honor of being on the board of Cure International. Well, if you haven't heard of Cure, I'm so excited to share with you about their significant ministry. What Cure does is really unique. It carries out the mission that Jesus gave us in Luke 9, 2, to proclaim the good news of the kingdom and to heal the sick. And I have to tell you, it is so amazing to see this all in action. God uses cure to heal children living with disabilities that can be treated with surgery. Cure has permanent hospitals in places all around the world where it's almost impossible for the vulnerable people to get access to this kind of surgery. But the most exciting thing is how deeply committed cure is to proclaiming the kingdom. When people come to Cure, they get to hear very clearly why they are being so loved. They're prayed for, told about Jesus, and many come to know him as Savior. (laughs) It's an absolutely remarkable ministry. Uh, There are so many kids who need healing on our waiting lists, and it's just a matter of funding these surgeries. So I hope you'll join me and join all of us in doing exactly what Jesus told his followers to do. And if you feel led to give, which I would encourage you to do, for instance, $1,000 completes the cost of a surgery, or pick another amount, whatever God may lead you to give, it all goes to help to heal the sick and to share the good news of Jesus Christ in a stunningly beautiful way. And you can give right now at moodyradio.org. It is Friday Eve here at the Brian and Janelle Show. It's actually Woo! Thursday, but... Uh... Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> we are bringing something that has us very, very excited. It's an opportunity for you to be a blessing to children around the world that need your help now. So Cure International is a ministry uh, in many different countries providing surgery for correctable disabilities. Many of these disabilities make children live the rest of their lives 
feeling like they're cursed, rejected by family and their community, and just a simple surgery costing $1,000 can change that. More importantly, these medical professionals and their team share the gospel with them, and gifts of any amount can come together and provide the healing they need. 833-246-HERO, 833-246-HERO. I'm a little nervous. Why? You need to remember we said just be yourself. Just be myself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ron, can you can you help me be myself with a large crowd when I when I introduce Yeah, our that guests? would help actually. Sure. So, yeah. but but for him, obviously. So, coming up right now to help us talk about Cure International. Not only is he a cure storyteller and an author, but he's an intergalactic Christian radio superstar. I can't believe we get to hang out with him. Brand <laughs> Hanson. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. <laughs> I can't believe I'm talking to Brant Hansen. Oh, yeah. Well, I can't believe I'm talking to you guys. And that is the, that's the introduction I richly deserve. So thank you. Oh, good. No in, in fact, ju- but before we talk about Cure, I have a two-part question to start us off. <laughs> when, when can we uh, hang out and will you be my best friend? Oh. I totally will. I like having friends, but you have to put up with my puppets and my accordion and stuff. So <laughs> that's the entry fee. Puppets, though. I mean, I'm cool with accordions, but puppets, bro, that's a little weird. But hey, I'm weird too, so I, I love it. Yeah, exactly. Yes, you are, <laughs> <Yeah>. Brian. <laughs> I love the Friday Eve concept. That's good. Thank and you. It's official. You, it, it is. It's yes. so cool. And this is the most refreshing thing you guys could possibly be talking about on this particular morning. That's like, right. Honestly. That's right. Yeah, it's a, the perfect I Friday Eve so topic. Glad. Yes, and just the fact that it's not part of the news cycle, like it's a totally different, <laughs> refreshing, what's God, what's God actually doing in the world? Oh, like, yeah. this is it. Yeah, and you know, here's where I want to really launch into this. I'd love to hear how you, Brant Hansen, Christian DJ, got connected to Cure International. Like, how, how, what's the story? You know what's weird is I was I was emceeing at a Toby Mac show of all things, and I'm not a very good MC, but that's a different story. Um, <laughs> they said something. There was somebody from Cure there, and I asked, "Well, what's Cure?" And it was this was backstage, and they said, "Well, it's a it's, these are permanent hospitals that are all about Jesus, where people with disabilities get healed." And I was like, "Really? That's interesting. I mean, they're permanent hospitals. Like they're yeah, we train nationals. It's all it's and and we pray over the kids. We have pastoral staff at every I'm like." Why haven't I heard of this? So they answered me, well, you haven't heard of it because we're actually busy doing the work. We're doctors. <laughs> okay, okay. So you're not just a big PR thing. Well, I went and said, can I visit one of the hospitals? And they let me go. You guys, the first day on the ground, I went in the operating room and I was watching a surgery. This was for a 17-year-old girl. So she's sleeping there. She's getting a cleft palate fixed. And in that culture, they were telling me about her life. She had never been allowed outside. Oh, wow. She was considered cursed. She was a monster. And people would run away from her. So her parents had to keep them secret because otherwise they would be kicked out of the community if people knew about her disability. That's what these kids, like every kid that's coming in a cure hospital, that's what they're facing in their traditional cultures that they're in. They're all considered cursed, and usually mom is blamed, like she must have done something morally wrong, and that's why you have a a kid with a disability. So they're asking the questions like they asked Jesus, like, well, who sinned? You know, was it him or his parents for the blind guy? Like, no, this is so that God could be glorified. And I've never seen that illustrated, like after her surgery. So she was still kind of swollen, but her lips were put together. Like she she was made whole, it was still swollen. You could see the stitches. But her face had been made whole. After she had woken up, she and her mom, I was in the children's ward, and I wanted her to see herself, but I couldn't find the mirror. And I was sitting on her bed, and I thought, oh wait, I got my iPhone. So I took my phone out, and I reversed the camera so she could see herself. And she held that thing in front of her face and just stared and stared and stared. And I know she was just thinking, I'm a human. I've been told I'm a monster all this time. It's not fair. It's not right. And these hospitals are all about telling people about Jesus. Like, no, you're not cursed, honey. God draws close to the brokenhearted. Actually, you're, 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 <laughs> he favors you. Um, so she's staring at this. I just think every 17-year-old girl wants to be beautiful, and she's seeing this for the first time. And uh, I'm like, I'm in. 
okay, that was worth a thousand bucks or whatever the whatever the surgery cost. So ever since then, I've been traveling to all these hospitals and then trying to use my platform, my books, or whatever to let people know that this is actually what God is doing in the world. This is the number one provider of pediatric orthopedic surgeries in the world, and people don't know about it because it's not a big PR thing. And they need funding because at just one of the hospitals, there's 5,000 plus kids on the waiting list. Oh. Kids with disabilities. It's, wait, it's just a matter of funding it. So that's why it's so awesome you guys are talking about it. So thanks for letting me prattle on about that. But I, I could go on forever. No, I, I love the, the stories. You're a great storyteller. And I, we are excited about this ministry. So tangible, so clear, so gospel centric. Tell us about something else you saw, Brent, at one of the hospitals for Cure International. Oh, my goodness. Every kid. Okay, so. What I did not expect was in the children's wards, there's all these women around, and they're all the moms, and they don't have anywhere to go. They don't have any money, so they can't pay for these surgeries. This is a miracle to them, but they come in and form this instant sorority of women who were told that they were the problem, who've been abandoned by their husbands, and they are living in the children's ward, too, so they're lying on the beds each night with their kids. They don't have, there's nowhere to go. So Cure feeds them, treats them like the doctors. They eat with the surgeons. Like everybody has the same cafeteria experience. It's beautiful. Everybody's at the same tables. But these are women who have been rejected. And for, um, I mean, you guys are both parents with lots of kids, which I love. And uh, like you, you would understand that you would do anything, anything. for your child. Yeah. So that's, that's the situation they're all in. To have them praising God together. Uh, having worship services together, having devotions daily in the uh, in the children's ward, and I'm telling you, you get to know the stories of these kids. You go one bed to the next; every one of them's like a movie. The last time I was at the hospital in Ethiopia, it was well. This girl's a burn victim. She's been suffering for nine years. She can't walk, but now she can. As of today, she took her first steps, and people are all cheering her on. Uh, and the next bed is a 13 year old boy from Somalia. They brought in who had been machine gunned in the legs when his village was attacked by militants. And he was the sweetest guy, he was learning some English, and we just had this amazing rapport. He's got this great smile behind the track, but every single bed as a kid in it was like, you gotta be kidding me. I get to pay for this kid's surgery? Like, yes, I'm all in. So again, anybody who's interested in like what God is actually doing in the world, this has to flip your switch and to be able to, to think about the kingdom of God and what he's actually doing. No one is scrolling these headlines right now. No one's saying 15 year old walks for the first time, you know, but this is actually, Jesus is actually at work on the margins doing what he's always done. And that's with, with people like this. And that's, that's why I'm, I'm such a huge fan of cure. And I would love to drag you guys to a hospital sometime. Sign me up, right? I know. <laughs> uh, there's no greater way to to show the love of Christ in practical ways like this, in terms of sharing the gospel and providing physical healing. And like you said, parents will do anything for their kids. Brent, do you have a favorite story about a reaction from a mom or a dad? The only problems are so many, but yeah. that's one. Yeah. This, one, this one lady, I remembered, uh, I'm trying to remember her, boy, her boy's name was... was Gosh, Andrew, he was little and couldn't walk because he had neglected club foot. Well, in America, you take care of that, you know, whippity quick. It's no mm -hmm. big deal. But there, he's not able to walk. She wanted him to go to school. They live miles from school. She doesn't have a car. She carried him to first grade. Oh. She carried him back and forth to second grade, miles. She carried him on her back, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, into middle school. Now he's big, and she's still carrying him. A truck driver stops, says, I think you need to hear about this hospital because I see you, you know, daily on this highway. She goes to the hospital. He gets surgery. He can walk and run now. But when she was at the hospital, she said, and this is the best reaction, summarizing all the other reactions. She said, this is a place where God walks the earth. Oh, wow. And that is it. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm drawn to this because I want to see Jesus in action. To have a place that's actually overtly proclaiming the kingdom of God and doing the healing, like, okay, I'm in. And I, I do think it's where God walks the earth, because he's using his people to do exactly what he told us to do. Yeah. And again, that's why we are pumped about this, right along with Brant Hansen we've been speaking mm -hmm. with. Uh, and we're asking you to get your gift in at any amount. It's $1,000 covers the cost of one of these transformative surgeries he's been talking about. 
for correctable disabilities and also brings the gospel along with it to a kid who needs their life changed, not just physically, but spiritually, and their families with them. Yeah. Uh, and your gift of any amount will help that. You give $100, you and 10 people get together, a kid's life is transformed. $500, it's, it's halfway there. A $1,000 gift will cover the cost. The easiest way to get in, go to our website, moodyradio.org slash Cleveland, moodyradio.org slash Cleveland. Or again, you can call them directly. We want you to go to Cure International, not us, Cure International, 833-246-HERO. Again, 833-246-HERO. We're Brian and Janelle and Ron, and here with our, our BFF, Brant Hansen, yeah. intergalactic Christian radio superstar, <laughs> on, live on our show. And we've had so much fun with you, Brant. We can't wait to hang out with you soon in person at one of these hospitals. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Okay. Thanks so much for your time, brother. We'll talk to you soon, okay? Bye-bye. Okay, man. You did good. It wasn't like a whole lot it wasn't overwhelming but you did geek out just so you know in case you were wondering but he plays with puppets and has an accordion so like i'm in good company yeah Yeah. you are and he's witty and curiously handsome so we have a lot in common (laughs) if you know god at all all through scripture And just in your own heart, God's about healing. You know, when you think about restoring the broken, I love that Cure is doing it in a a physical way and a spiritual way, emotional way, in every every way. Cure is taking care of the whole person. That's what's so awesome about this hospital is, you know, it's more than just an orthopedic hospital. It's more than just being able to heal them physically, but share the love of Jesus and heal them spiritually. And that's what's happening every day. Cure is not a new idea. <laughs> it's not like, wow, we have this new idea that no one's done before. And this is Jesus. This is the hands and feet of Jesus. This is what how He spoke. We're called to help those that we can. And no, we won't cure everybody, but we are called to take care of the ones we encounter. And those we can help, we should help. Here we are, Brian and Janelle. It's Thursday. We're what are we doing on a slide again? Hello, duh. We're halfway down the slide on our way to Friday because it's yep. Friday Eve. Oh, yeah, you that's right. That. I'm still on the bench waiting for <laughs> Friday to come. But we're so grateful to have you with us today. It's a special Thursday, Friday Eve. I almost said Thursday Eve. That's not even right. I'm so No, it is Friday, Friday Eve. Eve. It's yeah. a perfect day. And we're asking for your financial support, not for us, but for an organization making a huge difference for the kingdom around the globe. It's Cure International. And joining us now to talk more about who they are and what they're doing is Matt Munt. He's the Director of Marketing for Cure International. Welcome to the show, Matt. Thanks. Thanks for having me. So give folks a picture of exactly what it is, because I love how simple it is, that Cure International Mm -hmm. does around the world. So it's quite simply children's hospitals around the world, primarily in Africa. And then we have our Tim Tebow partnership, the Tebow Cure Hospital in the Philippines. And so these are hospitals. They're there for the long haul. And... Parents bring their kids there with treatable and correctable disabilities. Often these are disabilities that have gone untreated for years. And they come to our hospital. We heal them up because in Luke 9-2, Jesus calls us to heal the sick and proclaim the gospel. And what happens after you have a surgery? you got to heal, right? You recover. And that is, that is when we get to share the gospel and share the love of Jesus. And then the last part of that is these kids and these families go back to their communities and their villages. And imagine if a kid couldn't walk for his entire life, and now he can walk. What a witness that is. The ripple effects are amazing, and today we're asking Moody listeners, help us. There's wait lists at every one of our hospitals. There's so many kids that we can heal, and you know, most importantly, we want to share the love of Jesus with them. So thank you for, for having us and doing this today. And you know, one of the things Ron and I love so much when we learn more about Cure International is how you truly try to invest in local surgeons and local teams in these villages and communities. Can you talk about yeah. how that works and why you do that? Yeah, well, because the, the, the old saying is teach a man to fish, right? Well, we're teaching, mm-hmm. teaching men and women to do surgery. And it's because the need is so great it's across Africa and the Philippines that we don't want to just fly a, a surgeon in and do a few surgeries and then fly back home. There's more, more needed. And so not only are we doing surgeries every single day at our hospitals, but then we're also training up the next generation of surgeons. And what's awesome is, 
you can if you go to cure.org, you can see the kids who are currently in our hospitals. And when they first come in, they they've got no hope. They they've gone to different you know witch doctors and different places trying to be treated, and nothing's worked. By the time they're done at a cure hospital, they're dreaming again. They want to become a nurse or a doctor. And that's a common theme is that a lot of these kids, after having their lives completely radically transformed at a hospital, they have a, a dream again and, and, and goals and visions for their life. So pretty neat. Can you tell us one of your favorite cure stories? There's many. In fact, at every single hospital, we have a full-time position called a storyteller. And this simply is someone who, who takes photos and writes the stories of the kids coming in. Because if you're going to give your hard-earned money to us to be able to do these, these surgeries and share the gospel, we want to show you the result and the impact of what you're giving is doing. And so I actually make it a practice every single week. I go to our website, cure.org, and I look at the kids who are currently in our hospital. And so every week I've got a new favorite story. And so today, the story that really stood out to me was little Hilda. She is nine years old in Zambia. She's currently at the Cure Hospital in Zambia. And from 10 months old, she had a bone condition that caused her right leg to kind of bend out. And she's nine years old now. It hasn't been treated, hasn't been fixed. This quote broke my heart. It's from her mom. And her mom says, some people spit when they see her. There is a general belief that people with disabilities are cursed. And that story is so common with the kids who come to our hospital. But what I love is that they come to a cure hospital, they're welcomed in, they see other kids who have similar disabilities and conditions, and their life is transformed. But like, like I said, as they're healing up, they're getting to hear, okay, this is, these are why these Jesus people healed me. They start to learn about the gospel. And you can see, we do these updates every single, you know, when the kids go into surgery, when they come out. And with Hilda, the first photo when she came to our hospital, she kind of, she could look skeptical, like, what are you doing? I'm not sure if this is gonna work. Uh, by the end, there's photos of her playing with the other kids and smiling. And I just love that, that we get to give today. And in less than a month from now, a child's life is going to be radically transformed and they're going to be taught and told about the love of Jesus. That all happens when you give. It's pretty incredible. And that's why we are so pumped about this opportunity. We're encouraging you, Brian and Janelle Moody Radio family, to help one of these children just like the one you just heard about. So easy to get your gift in now. You can call directly to Cure International at 833-246-HERO. Again, 833-246-HERO. Special thanks to Matt Munt, Director of Marketing for Cure International. Love what you guys are doing and so grateful to partner with you, my friend. Well, thank you. We couldn't do it without you and your listeners. So God bless what you guys do with your ministry also. 833-246-HERO. 833-246-HERO. Hey, hold up. Where are you going? You know you liked your time with us. You want more. So look down, hit that button right there, subscribe, and you'll get updated episodes, and then you can hang some more. And guess what? You can help us. How? A five-star rating. You can also hang with us live weekday 6 to 9 a.m., interact with us, talk with us, download the Moody Radio app. Or at brianintonell.org. And we don't put all this together all by ourselves. There's some great people behind all this production. We want to thank Ron Eastwood, Kelly Ryder, Paul Carter, Mike Reynolds, and our awesome and fearless leader, Josue Villa. And finally, this podcast is a production of Moody Radio in Cleveland, a ministry of Moody Bible Institute. Well, Brian, that's a wrap. Yep.